aquaculture. Is it just fish farming? Also known as aqua farming, this process first came about back in 1733. Though it may only seem like fish farming, there's much more to it, which is why it's recently been getting some attention. In today's video, we're going to discuss what aquaculture really is and why billionaires are investing in it. Australian billionaire and businessman Andrew Forrest recently ventured into the latest farming trend, aquaculture. In fact, the 59-year-old already has quite a significant stake in one of the biggest companies in that line of work, Huon Aquaculture, and is looking to promptly expand more into Western Australia. However, Forrest isn't alone, as aquaculture continues to grow overseas and in Australia, and has seen a surge in consumer demand for more fish products and more of an emphasis on sustainability. With that said, though, what exactly is aquaculture? Well, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, it is defined as the farming of aquatic organisms, including fish, mollusks, crustaceans, and aquatic plants. While it may seem harmful, the process involving human intervention in the life cycle of sea creatures is for the better good, serving purposes such as protection from predators, regular stocking, and feeding. In aquaculture, there are usually three steps. First, a hatchery that produces fertilized eggs, larvae, or fingerlings, a nursery that fosters all of the small larvae into fingerlings or juveniles, and lastly, a so-called grow-out operation that farms fingerlings or juveniles into sizes that are marketable. Although many think of images such as salmon cages when they first hear aquaculture, the process can actually be done in all sorts of different marine environments like freshwater, open water, and even brackish water. Similarly, there are also different types of aquaculture, intensive and extensive. According to the Federal Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment, intensive aquaculture typically involves the intervention and the growing process. Take, for example, using supplemental feeding and water aer aeration in an industry like prawn farming. On the other hand, extensive aquaculture usually uses natural food sources and conditions and allows the stock to grow on its own. One example of this type of aquaculture is oyster farming or abalone ranching. A question commonly asked about this type of farming is if we're eating it or not. Every year it's estimated that Australians eat around 350,000 tons of seafood, which is equivalent to about 15 kilograms per person. It was also estimated that about 65% of consumption in Australia in 2017 to 18 came from seafood imports. Although it's rather difficult to determine exactly how much of that overall consumption was produced by aquaculture, the Department of Agriculture, Water, and the Environment revealed that aquaculture actually made up an estimated 43% of Australia's seafood production by value in 2012 and 13. Back then, in 2018, the industry was worth a little over $1.4 billion, with its most popular products being tuna, pearls and prawns, and oysters. It should be noted that Australia's aquaculture, one of the biggest, is currently worth more than $1 billion a year. With that said, though, the federal government plans to have this doubled by 2027. Australia has quite the history with aquaculture, dating back a long time. As a matter of fact, sources note evidence that suggested aboriginal populations farmed eels, crayfish, and yabbies centuries ago. These days, Australia's island state, Tasmania, is the powerhouse for the industry, having two of the biggest players in ASX-listed salmon producers, Tassal and Huon Aquaculture. Following that is South Australia, which is the next biggest fish in Australian aquaculture, and pioneer tuna farming in the ocean waters just off the Eyre Peninsula. Together, South Australia and Tasmania make up the largest part of the national aquaculture industry, which is about 75% according to the federal government. As you go farther out, aquaculture production decreases in both size and scale. For example, in Queensland and New South Wales, prawn producers that were hit hard by an outbreak of white spot disease back in 2016 are still working to recover their lost ground. Then, going to the West Coast, mining billionaire Andrew Forrest has some aspiring plans to become one of the world's largest oyster producers by developing an aquaculture hub in Albany. The billionaire has also explained that he wants to farm shellfish and finfish in northern waters as well. Along with all of this, there are also goals to farm a yellowtail finfish off West Australia's Midwest, while barramundi is grown at Cone Bay in West Australia's Kimberley. However, it isn't until top end that the magnitude of Australia's aquaculture quest becomes apparent. Under plans backed by loaded investors, a company called Sea Farms hopes to develop the world's biggest prawn farming operation. If this plan were to be real, Realized, the project would span from Exmouth on West Australia's Northwest Cape to Gun Point, east of Darwin, and involve the production of 150,000 tons of black tiger prawn a year. So, Australia is a gold mine for aquaculture, but what about the rest of the world? There's no doubt that Australia makes up a decent amount of the aquaculture game. However, according to the Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economics, Australia only produced 97,000 tons of aquacultural goods in the year of 2018. This compares with global production of 82 million tons in 2018, according to the United
United Nations, meaning Australia accounted for a fraction of 1% in world trade. With that said, the biggest players were instead in Asia, which was led by China, but closely followed by Southeast Asian countries including Indonesia, Vietnam, and Bangladesh. In its State of the World Fisheries and Aquaculture Report for 2020, the UN estimated that Asian nations made up about 90% of global aquacultural production. To add to that, the UN also said that the share of aquaculture in global fisheries output was growing. The contribution of world aquaculture to global fish production reached 46% in 2018, up from 25.7% in 2000, and 29.7% in the rest of the world, excluding China, compared with 12.7% in 2000, the report explained. With aquaculture continuing to grow, many still wonder or are hesitant about the sustainability of the industry. Praised as an ethical alternative to the problem of overfishing in some of the world's oceans, aquaculture has grown to be more widely researched as its size has grown. In a book written by Richard Flanagan on aquaculture, it was insisted that the salmon farming industry was not clean and green as its marketing often suggested, but rather environmentally damaging. While Flanagan's book caused a lot of talk, on the flip side, Andrew Forrest argued that shellfish farming is advantageous to the aquatic environment. He explained that mollusks, such as oysters, were a natural filter for marine environments, arguing that their production was completely sustainable, making the statement, if we can do it so it's sustainable, it increases marine life, abundance, and biodiversity, plus makes this beautiful protein which gives jobs, employment, economy to the local communities, then it's a win-win for nature and a win-win for mankind, he said. That's reasonably rare, so we're going after it hard. In terms of fish consumption, the trends seemingly point upward. The production of world fish is expected to see sustained growth in the double digits. As a matter of fact, we're already seeing advancements in terms of new ways to deliver vaccines, new types of fish food, and developing fish and shellfish that are more tolerant of stress that's associated with changing conditions. Luckily, this research and development is coming at the perfect time. The reason being that the FDA only recently completed its regulatory infrastructure for aquaculture fish, and it's estimated that one-third of the world's oceans are already overfished. However, there is hope on the horizon in the form of new startups, venture capitalists, and accelerators focused on international aquaculture. For existing enterprise players and those looking for new types of ag tech opportunities, there is no better time to learn how aquaculture works and the associated risk and reward, the value of aquaculture to the evolving world population, and lastly, the encouraging economics for innovators, investors, and animal health industry leaders. Going back to iron ore miner Andrew Forrest, he has bought an almost $20 million stake in a Tasmania-based aquaculture company, which plans to establish a 2,200-hectare fish farm in the Abralis Islands. Tedder and AgriFood, the Forrest family's holding company, recently acquired a 7.33% stake in Huon Aquaculture, which in turn produced a $95.3 million loss for the six months to December last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Then in February, the company came out to explain that the start of the pandemic had coincided with a significant increase in production, the groundwork for which that had been laid two years prior. The five-year capital investment program had been designed to modernize Huon's infrastructure and increase production capacity to meet the expected growth and demand for the near future. However, things didn't go exactly according to plan, as the company stated that the impact on demand in the last quarter of 2020 and 2021 ultimately meant that alternative markets had to be found, with the excess supply creating a significant decrease in pressure on the salmon price. Huon also experienced two separate incidents in November, which involved damage to the netting of fish pens, which then led to fishes to escape, overall costing the company an estimated $2 million. Earlier this year, the company announced that it had appointed advisory firm Grant Samuel to undertake a strategic review of the business in light of poor performance during the pandemic. Huon Aquaculture then later received a license to operate commercial-scale farming and sea cages at the Abralis Islands in February. With that said, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching!